got our basic curl patch running again with the Vulcan Modulator LFOs directly controlling the maths function generator without in, any intervening uh, controlling modulation. And I just wanted to take a moment to show you some of the nice shapes that you can get out of a function generator like maths when you start to fiddle around with its shape control. And if we move it to be a little bit more log, then we're going to get some longer. This will slow it down. And I'm going to compensate by bringing rise and fall a little bit faster. But we get some nice rounded shapes. This can be quite nice, giving us a sort of a woodwind texture. And then let's go the other way. So as we move towards what math calls its more exponential shapes, it will start to speed up, shortening both the rise and the fall, giving us some nice little sharp edges. And this gets us into some nice plucky, almost boucle territory. And of course, if you really wanted to take the time to patch it up, it's easy enough using some CV mixer functions to mix in the output from maths back into its input to create and have control over some of your, your own curves. But we're going to look at um, some different ways of having control over the curve shape as this becomes an important aspect of our Krell. So as, this, as I get deeper into this video series, we'll look at some other ways of solving some of these problems. Experimenting with the curl patch, sometimes making changes to the amount or the rate that the LFOs control the function generator can really change the kind of output you're getting from it. And so sometimes I'll like to sit for long periods of time noodling around with little patches that I create just, just to give myself a sense of what the output is. And then if I find something interesting, then I might take that part of the patch that's generating a CV function that looks really useful for me, and I might find interesting ways to modulate it and use it in something bigger and more complex as some part of a patch. So here what I'm doing is I've got a dope for joystick patched so that its output controls the rate of our two Vulcan modulator LFOs. So when I've got the joystick in the center, then I've got both LFOs running at almost the same rate. If I move the joystick to the top right, then I speed up both of the LFOs by about the same amount. So now they're both running fairly quick. Curl patch tends to work best if the modulations that you're feeding into it aren't too fast. Unless, of course, you want some really quick, almost audio rate moving functions. The reason for this is that if the LFOs are function generators that are controlling the, ri the rise and the fall are going too fast, then you won't really get much of a sense of the rise and fall changing very much. 
If I move the joystick to the bottom left, then both of my controlling LFOs are running quite slow. Inversely, if I put the joystick in the top left corner, then the LFO that's controlling the rise is moving slow, but the LFO that's controlling the fall is back to moving kind of at a medium, medium tempo. And we can see by watching the scope that the, the rise or attack portion of the function generator tends to be the one doing all the work. It's doing lots of changes, whereas our fall is generally staying fairly short. If I do the opposite and pull the joystick into the bottom right-hand corner, now I've got the opposite in terms of my rates. The LFO that's controlling rise is relatively fast compared to the much slower LFO that's controlling our fall. And we can see that we're getting a bigger differentiation in our fall. So this can be very useful if you want to create a long drawn out generative patch and you want to be able to make some alterations to one of your voices, say if this was your lead voice. It's, it would be quite simple to either use a voltage recorder like a CV recorder or even use a sequencer to sequence the speed of those two LFOs and then step through it very slowly creating little sections of your piece that has different kinds of articulations. So on its own, it may not be hugely musical, but I often find myself spending a lot of time fiddling with little control patches like this, looking for interesting little voltages. And then once I find something interesting and I find a range of control that gives me an interesting output, then I'm looking for ways that I can sequence or control that as part of a bigger patch. Next, we're going to take a look at something that's a little bit simpler, but gives us a little bit more hands-on control over what's happening in our Krell patch. And finally, for the simplest way that we can modulate our function generator, we can modulate it directly. So here what I've done is I've taken our basic Krell patch, again channel 4 is our rise and fall, and I'm modulating rise and fall separately from two axes of the dope for joystick. So if I move the joystick into the corner, I can get rise and fall to run faster. And if I move it into the opposite corner, both rise and fall will run slower. So that's simple enough, but what we really want to do is to get in there and start to make changes that can reproduce the kinds of outputs that we're getting from running LFOs or another function generator into our rise and fall so that we're mimicking what the original Krell patch was doing. And as long as I keep moving, I'm essentially becoming both LFOs. It's a lot of fun to just sort of sit here and see what kind of shapes you can get. And it's a little bit like performing along with another player. You can get it to run quick. And then grab a note and hold it and then get it moving again. So exactly what you're seeing now as I fiddle around with the joystick looking for ways to modulate the rise and fall is exactly the process that I used on my large self-generating patch for my piece, A Rush of Souls, released in 2020. The only difference there was that once I started to get the hang of it, 
so that I could see that it was going to be possible, I then moved the patch over and tuned the control voltages so that I could use dope fur antenna theremin modules instead of a joystick. So a patch like this hardly takes any modules, but can get you into some Krell territory while at the same time giving you some control over it. In the upcoming videos, we'll explore some different modules that will get us to some of these places faster with fewer cables and allow us to run more function generators simultaneously so that we can start to add voices of polyphony. Great, well I hope you've enjoyed the video series so far. Please consider joining my Patreon to support me as I make more crazy modular videos. Take care and stay safe and we'll see you next time. Thank you.